Drawing Out the Facts, the Naked Science Scrapbook. Hello and welcome to the Naked Science Scrapbook from the Naked Scientists. This time we're answering the question, how do microbes make biohydrogen? With worldwide concern over the use of fossil fuels to produce our electricity and power our cars, people are looking for alternative sources of energy. Hydrogen is considered to be a key fuel of the future because it packs three times the energy weight for weight of petrol or diesel, and the only waste product when it burns is water. But until recently, the only way of producing hydrogen was steam reformation, where fossil fuels are heated with steam under high pressure. This is obviously not a renewable source of hydrogen, and it doesn't reduce our reliance on fossil fuels. So instead, scientists are working on ways to get microbes to make hydrogen for us, and there are currently three main methods. The first requires carbon dioxide, water and sunlight. These are supplied to photosynthesizing microbes like cyanobacteria and algae. During photosynthesis, these microbes produce hydrogen and oxygen by using sunlight to split water. The problem with this method of biohydrogen production, though, is that the cells have to do a lot of metabolic work to produce it. This means that you need a very large bioreactor to make just a small quantity of biofuel rather slowly. The next two methods both begin with biomass. This can be any type of biological matter from waste food or wood, corn stalks, domestic rubbish and even sewage. In the UK alone, we accumulate over 100 million tonnes of these biodegradable wastes every year. This biomass can be collected and sent to a production plant called a biorefinery. These are a type of facility still being developed that, as well as biohydrogen, can also produce many other useful organic compounds, including alcohols, organic acids and gases like methane. When the biomass arrives at the plant, it's a mixture of large and complex organic molecules like cellulose that are hard to break down. In order to feed it to the microbes that will produce the hydrogen, the complex molecules must first be broken down into simpler sugars. One of the ways to do this is to cook it with water at about 230 degrees C under pressures up to 60 times atmospheric pressure. The next method of biohydrogen production is called dark fermentation. As the name suggests, this is carried out in the absence of light. Bacteria consume the sugars from the treated biomass to produce hydrogen, carbon dioxide and organic acids. Organic acids are harmless but smelly compounds including acetic acid, which goes very well with fish and chips. Photofermentation is the third and perhaps most efficient method of hydrogen production. It uses purple bacteria that are known as photoheterotrophs because they use the energy in sunlight to break down organic acids to form hydrogen, a small amount of CO2 and the carbon compounds that they need to grow. The biohydrogen produced usually makes up around 90% of the gas released from the reactors and has no poisonous contaminants like carbon monoxide or hydrogen sulphide. Researchers at the University of Birmingham are working on a dual system that uses dark fermentation and photofermentation, feeding the organic acids from the first process directly into the reactors for the second. This allows a large amount of very pure biohydrogen to be produced, alongside a whole range of useful byproducts. The big challenge that they face is that purple bacteria require a lot of sunlight in order to convert organic acids into hydrogen. This means that the bioreactors take up a lot of space. So the Birmingham team has come up with a new neat trick that could make the bioreactors twice as effective. Algae and cyanobacteria grow best under red light, while the purple bacteria do best under infrared light. So by using an optical device called a dichroic mirror, which reflects infrared light while allowing the rest of the spectrum through, the Birmingham researchers have been able to feed two bioreactors. The algae and cyanobacteria get the red light they need, and the purple bacteria get the infrared that they like. So far, the researchers have shown that this dichroic beam-sharing idea works perfectly in small lab experiments, and the next stage is to try it with larger reactors. The hydrogen produced can be fed into devices called fuel cells, which produce electricity that can be used to power our cars, laptops and appliances. But that's not all. The purple bacteria can also be used to recover precious metals, like platinum, from scrap. This can be recycled to make catalysts for the fuel cells that consume the hydrogen the bacteria produce. They can also be used to produce bioplastics, and the carotenoids and proteins they contain can be used for animal feed and cosmeceuticals. So, the group at Birmingham believe that this could be the most efficient and environmentally friendly way to produce hydrogen in the future, and they hope that we could see biohydrogen being produced for commercial use within a decade. That's it for this time. 
To find out more about the University of Birmingham's work on biohydrogen, visit www.birmingham.ac.uk forward slash biohydrogen. And to get the answers to more science questions from the Naked Science scrapbook, including how a fuel cell actually works, join us online at thenakedscientist.com forward slash scrapbook. Bye.